Hi folks, welcome to Coffee and Colossians. On Friday, uh, got my Macca's coffee and I am down at the Botanic Gardens, which is just, I, I, I don't know if there's any place just as beautiful as it. But uh, we are considering a different kind of beauty, the beauty of Christ that's shown in the church. And I hope you're seeing that these great principles that are taught in Colossians are now enacted. I, I, my view is that the, the church is, sorry, I'm sitting on a bench, so I have to turn around, that the church is both the worst apologetic for the gospel and the best apologetic. When, when it works, it really works. Uh, and it's such an attractive thing. I mean, I was very much drawn to Christ by what I saw in some Christians. And I was repulsed by what I saw in some others. But this church in Colossae, it's, look, we've seen already the difficulties that there are and the troubles that they face. But uh, people who are in prison or people who've had a fight like John Mark and, and, and Paul, but we're now on to verse 12. Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends you greetings. He is always wrestling for prayer in you, wrestling for prayer for you, so that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. Now, if you go back through the letter, you will see that the words mature, fullness, fully assured, or, th these are very, very common themes. Standing firm, that's the, the, the whole purpose. So for example, in chapter two, um, I am present with you in spirit, delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. Uh, you know, continue to live, be, be strengthened in him. Um, continue in your faith, established and firm in chapter one. And that firmness, we really need it. We just, we, we just absolutely need it. This is a battle and it's something that it's very important for us to grasp. And so he prays. Now, who prays? Epaphras. Well, what do we know about Epaphras? Uh, he, he appears in a lot of different places. He was a native of Colossae. Um, he was an evangelist in his hometown as well as in Laodicea and also in Hierapolis. So if you go back to chapter 1, verse 7, um, you learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf. The Colossians were Christians because of the ministry of Epaphras. And Paul's saying, he's, he's wrestling for you in prayer. Anyone who's a pastor, you have to wrestle for people in prayer because the devil is always seeking to take them away. Um, the work is never finished and it's never done. Or in chapter 2, verse 1, I want you to know how hard I'm contending for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who've not met me personally. There's a contention that goes on. It is hard. It is difficult. Now, what is he praying? He's praying that they would stand firm in the will of God, mature and fully assured. Now, that deals with the Colossian heresy. They were being tempted to, to go a, a different route. There have always been false teachers in the church, and there, are, there still are. And he wants them to be filled with everything that is God's will, and he wants them to be completed. Do you realize that you're not finished yet? I mean, I know we become Christians. We're justified by faith, but we are being sanctified. We are being saved as well. There's an ongoing work. And I love it. I, love, I used to have a t-shirt that said, please be patient with me. God is not finished with me yet. Well, that's what's happening in the church because Christians are meeting together, encouraging one another, building one another up, challenging one another, admonishing one another, discipline one another so that we may become this thing of great beauty that Christ marries. I mean, I look around here and it's just, oh, it's just so stunningly beautiful. And yet I read in Colossians that all of this was created for him and through him and by him and will be renewed by him. And we are very, very much part of that new creation. So it's just a wonderful thing to have someone like Epaphras, a minister like Epaphras, who is a, he's one of you, but he's a servant. He's a servant and he wrestles in prayer. As I prepare to go to Newcastle to take up a new ministry, God willing, we, we and <laughs> immigration and so on, all working out, 
That's what I aim for. That's what I want to be. A servant, a wrestler in prayer, someone who seeks to present people fully mature in Christ through the teaching of God's Word. Well, God bless you um, from this beautiful spot. Uh, I'm heading off to hear Beethoven 7, speaking of beauty. I'm just treating myself today. I'm going to the Opera House and uh, the Sydney Symphony Orchestra are playing at Beethoven 7. So I'll maybe tell you more about that another time. But join us on Sunday for the Sunday Catechism. And if not, I'll see you again next Monday. I don't know where, you'll be, where I'll be. I'm going to try and wander around different parts of Sydney as we come to our final month here. God bless you. And uh, please wrestle in prayer for me, for you, for all God's people. And may we all be mature and complete. Bye.